What's up internet? My name is Sammy Fightmaster and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be reviewing the movie Ford vs. Ferrari. And yes, I am aware it has been out for several months. However, when it first came out, it came out during a very busy time. So I didn't get to go see it. But now since movie theaters are kind of shut down, I've got a little bit of time to catch up on the movies that I didn't get a chance to go see in person. So let's get into it. I'll be honest, I wasn't too excited to watch this movie because it is about cars. And I'm not a huge car person. I like them. I know nothing about them. It's got some very good actors in it, so I figured, why not? So the movie is set in the mid-1960s, and it's around the time that Ford's image is not fantastic. I mean, they're basically the safe car. They're mass producing all these vehicles and it's not anything too exciting and they want to change that so they want to make a deal with ferrari who is going bankrupt at the moment because of the image that ferrari has and how they're all handmade they're all really fast cars and they've won this race called the 24 hours of le mans in france four years in a row ford decides they want to partner with them and build a race car and compete in this and hopefully win it. Well, something happens and uh, Ferrari turns down the deal, leaving Ford to just be like, okay, what do we do now? So Ford decides that they're gonna go ahead and make these race cars and they don't really know how to do it. So they decide to reach out to Carol Shelby, who is a famous car designer and former racer um, who can no longer race himself because they know that he's got an expertise. He's actually competed in the Le Mans race. So he knows the track. He knows what it's going to be like. So they reach out to him and want him to help build this car. They only have 90 days to do it. And they've decided they really want to beat Ferrari after they got turned down. Which seems pretty impossible considering where Ford is at at this point in history. So Mr. Shelby needs a good driver. And he knows one who a little difficult. His name is Ken Miles. He's a British racer who's very good. Right now he's a mechanic who his family needs the money because his shop just got foreclosed on. Shelby wants him to race. However, Ford's got some issues with him because like I said, he's difficult. He wants to do things his way. Doesn't really like taking orders from top dogs. So that becomes a little bit of a problem that Throughout the movie, they have to work through. Shelby and Miles are trying to build this car together. Miles keeps testing it. He knows exactly what's wrong every time that he drives it. They fix it and try to make this really fast race car. That becomes, if you know anything about car history, you already know they build one of the fastest cars on the planet. I don't know anything about car history, so this was a good movie. So throughout the whole movie, they're battling with the executives of Ford trying to prove that they know what they're talking about and just trust them. Eventually they get to Le Mans and they've got to test their car against Ferrari. And the last, I guess about 30 minutes of the movie is this race. And it is pretty awesome. Coming from somebody who's not a huge car person, I thought that the end of this movie with dealing with the race and all the shots and everything was done phenomenally well. Well, this movie was directed by James Mangold, who has directed movies like Logan, Wolverine, 310 to Yuma. Obviously, it stars Matt Damon and Christian Bale. No need to explain them. The chemistries between their two characters was awesome. It was another layer to the movie that just made it that much better. Matt Damon played Carol Shelby. Christian Bale played... Ken Miles, who I thought Christian Bale was pretty funny in this movie too. He's a little sarcastic, which I love that kind of humor. So I thought it was really funny. Obviously it's a drama, so there are serious points to the movie, but there was a good little comedy break every now and then. It had tons of actors in it as well. Ken Miles' son was played by Noah Jupe, who is a rising star at the moment. He was in Honey Boy, and he's probably best known for his role in A Quiet Place. Also had Roy McKinnon, who, if you aren't placing an image in your head, if you've seen The Blind Side, he's Coach Cotton. And one of the guys that plays kind of the jerk executives for Ford was Josh Lucas, who I personally love because he was in Sweet Home Alabama, which I've got the poster right back here. Um, 
one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Anyways, acting was phenomenal in this movie. I totally understand why it got nominated for so many things. It was just so good. I wasn't expecting a lot from it. Like I know it was a award winning and nominated movie, but it's a car movie. I'm not a car girl, so I wasn't expecting a lot from it. Wasn't expecting to get into it at all. And I did. I really got into it and I really liked it. Now, since the whole movie kind of revolves around all these big moments in car history and racing history, I was kind of lost for some of those things. I watched it with my parents and my dad was like, oh my goodness, to all these major things that are happening and like had little stories. And I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. I need more depth into what they just said. Like I knew hearing the name, Carol Shelby, I know that there's a Shelby Mustang or Shelby Cobra Mustang. I don't know the like exact terminology. I just know his name is definitely associated with cars. Everything else, I don't, I'm sorry. I am clueless when it comes to cars. That being said, you don't have to like cars to like this movie. It was definitely a good movie. I would absolutely rate this five stars just because like, I know it was an award nominated and everything movie, but it deserved to be, that's for sure. I watched it on On Demand since I'm one of the few people left in the world that still has cable. Um, I got on On Demand and watched it. You can get it on iTunes or Apple TV if you have that. You can rent it, watch it. I highly recommend doing that if you didn't get a chance to go see it in theaters. Well, that's all I've got for you today. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and want to see more stuff like this, hit that subscribe button and stick around. Well, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!